Hello everyone, my name is Dorian, welcome to another track guide with the LMP2. We are at Interlagos, and boy is it hot here this season. About 50 to 60 Celsius on the track, so tire management is gonna be key here. Really be careful when you're drafting, the car gets very slippery, both in the front and the back, and try to break a little bit earlier. Compared to last season, you're about 3 seconds a lap slower, so you gotta be careful and maintain your tires. That's the main focus here, because at the end of the stint, that's where it's gonna come to its own, and that's where you'll gain the most amount of time if you are careful. Now, before we move on to the rest of the track guide, I just want to mention we have a new series on this uh, channel called Stop Your Slowness Saturday. I almost forgot the name. Now, uh, one of my mods, Tiny, he, he suggested it. Basically, you guys send me over your lap replays and I analyze them for a video, giving you guys tips and tricks on how to get a little bit more consistent, a little bit faster. Any road car, any road track would do. So you can just hop over to my Discord, link in the description below, and submit your lap, and I might choose it for a video and give you guys some pointers for that. Doesn't matter if it's unofficial that week or whatever, just you might be preparing for a league race and trying to get it a little bit better. Anything will do. Also, thank you guys so much for a thousand subscribers. That came around a lot faster than I thought. Really appreciate it, and if you guys enjoyed these videos and you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Leave a like, let me know in the comments what you think, and my Discord as well. I'm just gonna show you guys the lap real quick, and then we're gonna go over it corner by corner. See you on the track. Okay, so we're coming up to turn number one. Let's look for a breaking point. It's going to be right before the 50. You can see I'm placing the car. I'm placing the right side of the car on the white line here. I don't want to go across it because it's very dirty here and it's going to make it difficult for me to brake hard. I'm going to brake right around here. Technically, it could have braked a little bit later. I got about half a tank of gas, so a bit later would have been wiser, and you'll see why in a second. Speaking very high, 90%. And staying on the right, but you can see there's micro adjustments with the wheel. Because of that, I have to release very quickly. So, releasing from 90 to 70, staying on that for a little bit longer. Keep turning the wheel a little bit. I'm not trying to turn in the car, I'm just trying to stay with the road, with the right side of the road. Releasing it more and more. 50% now at this point. And around, right around here is when I'm going to make the decision to turn in. You can see where the rubber goes. So it's not going to be on the inside here, and the reason for that is because you want to have a very late apex here. So turn it in quite late, very gentle with my initial input, turn in the car slowly, and as you can see I'm going neutral here, and you don't want that, you want to be on the brakes and into the throttle. So I brake a little too early. Uh, for these conditions, if you've got a heavy car, that's around where you want to brake. Into the corner, you want to trail brake into this very late apex. So you want to clip it right around here, even a little bit later if you're brave. And as soon as I clip it back on the power, I'm staying in second gear. You could do it in first. Uh, the car gets a little unsettled. It's very difficult to keep it stable as you go through it in first. Uh, less consistent, but potentially faster. About a tenth faster if you stick it in first every time. 50%. 
slowly squeezing more and more out of it as I straighten out the wheel. Back to 100 for a very short period of time as I start to turn right. I'm going to release it to around 50% to maintain stability on this curve. Now, I clipped it a bit too much. It cost me, I don't know, let's say half a tenth, maybe a tenth. So the car is very bouncy. I clipped it a little too early. That's the thing. I should have turned in just a little bit later. Would have been fine. But uh, again, no off track and it was pretty fast. It was probably the fastest uh, time, my, my fastest sector here. So squeezing the throttle as I, as I uh, uh, kind of mount the curb and the car starts bouncing. I'm giving more and more throttle just to maintain stability. And kind of chucked me to the outside here. A little too much than I would like, but still pretty good corner. I mean, uh, it was very aggressive. I wouldn't try to be that aggressive in a race, but in terms of speed, it was all right. You just want to turn into the first apex a little bit later, and all this, uh, this other stuff won't happen. Staying on the inside, the, the, throughout the duration of that corner, op only opening up the wheel at the end of it. Now, coming into turn number three, uh, you want to start braking right at the 100 or slightly past it i'm gonna start breaking maybe a tiny bit after it definitely before this axis route though so i'm looking at this this axis route i'm trying to break as close to it as i dare without really reaching it and that's going to give me a nice late breaking point Again, peaking very high you're going straight line easy breaking point here starting to release it very gradually i'm not trying to stay on the brakes for too long here because you're scrubbing off a lot of downforce and you might lock up right around 50 percent at this point all the way down into second gear and not trying to turn in too early here the optimal line here is a slightly later apex this was a tad early but it was pretty decent you want to keep your left side of the car uh right around this area so slightly to the left of this uh, blacker part of the curb And already squeezing back to the throttle, so you, I'm, I'm preparing the car basically to be stable on the curb because it's gonna make it bounce. Forty percent, fifty percent as it lands, sixty, seventy, very lazy, very slow into the into the uh, throttle. Then the car go to the outside using the curb on the way out, and you're through. Taking a nice tight line through here. And we're setting ourselves up for this double apex. Now, you have this little uh, guard post, whatever it is, marshal post. That's sort of my indication. So as it disappears from my field of view, each field of view is different. But that's a good indication. I, you could break a little bit later here and still make it through this corner. Um, but when you're drafting or if you're trying to maintain tires, a smarter move would be to break a little bit earlier. It would definitely ease off the scrubbing because you can really ruin the tires on this double apex. Notice how my brake input is uh, quite different here. It's peaking at 60%, but but for maybe a tenth of a second. And immediately I'm starting to release it all the way down to trail brake. And I'm not staying on brakes for uh, any duration of time, really. Uh, the reason for that is because we're going uphill and the car is slowed down anyway. All the way down to third gear. Try and clip this first apex just a tiny bit. You don't want to mount it, really, because it's going to chuck you to the outside. That's not what you want to happen. Trail braking all the way through it. And as, it, as we clear it, I'm going to stop trail braking, go back to the power, let the car go sort of a little bit more to the outside so I can open up this next apex. Now, this next apex is all about steering with throttle. So as you can see, I'm giving it a lot of throttle because uh, the car is still very tight on the inside of the corner. I want it to go a little bit more to the outside. And as it does, I'm lifting again. Then the car rotate nicely and clip the second apex. And now I'm committing to around 70% and squeezing all the way back to 100. Third, the whole way through, if you're drafting and track is super, super hot, like 60 degrees, then yeah, maybe uh, maybe second gear just on the exit. On the entry, keeping the third, second gear just on the exit might help you get a little bit more rotation. It will be bad for your rear tires, though. Keep that in mind. Let the car go all the way to the outside, and there's no braking point here, so it's all about a sequence, a certain flow that you develop with this track. Finish the second apex, take the car to the outside, and as soon as I straighten out the wheel, I'm going to start to brake. Now you can see, that just like turn number one, I'm, I'm making micro adjustments to kind of rotate the car slightly towards the corner. The peak is around, I would say, 50%. Downshifting pretty rapidly. 
all the way down to first gear. Just now put it in first, and as I put it in first, I'm gonna ask it for a lot because I do this is not your apex. This is your apex, pretty much. And see how much I'm cutting this curb. The car handles it just fine. I'm using Craig's setup shop. And it's, uh, it's pretty soft, so it's, it's very good on the curbs now. Trail braking all the way into the halfway point and immediately back on the power. Around 50%. 50% is the, kind of the sweet spot when you're trying to settle the car, the car down when, once it lands from a curb. So keeping that there and letting it settle down, opening up the wheel, and only then am I squeezing more and more out of it around 90 percent i would say because we have a very short period of time before we have to trail break again dab of around i don't know 30 percent immediate release into trail breaking trying to hug this whole section on the left hand side technically that was a little too tight on the inside i would want to have the left uh front right around here and at this point it's right here so that's a little too much kind of made it bounce but it was still pretty good. See the car kind of goes to the outside a little bit. So now it's exactly where I want it to be. Turning in the car. Still trail braking just a tiny bit. You don't really have to. It helps the tire wear. And going back to the power about a third way through the corner. I would say 50%. 50% yeah, around 50%. 60 But staying on it for a while. I'm preparing the rear end for uh, to get loaded up. Make sure I got plenty of load on the rear suspension before I ask it for full throttle because the car has a tendency to kick out here on the exit and you don't want that. Again, tire management is key and you're going to lose some time. So only, uh, only open up the wheel quite late, using the curb all the way to the outside and preparing ourselves already. You're, you're starting to think about the next corner. And... Um, in terms of a breaking point here, each field of view is different. You got this access route. Technically, that's probably your best indication. Problem is, I can't really see it. So I'm focusing on this tree. This guy is my friend. I'm looking at him. Hey, tree, when, when should I break? He says now. So at this point, that's where I commit to breaking. Uh, peaking 60, releasing very quickly. And you can see the angle of the car is very strange here. You don't have a lot of time to straighten out the car to the left. So I'm breaking diagonally while i'm turning right so i'm breaking diagonally to the left while i'm turning right as i ask it for a lot of braking i'm going to straighten out the wheel but as i release it i'm going to turn it in more and more it has to be synchronized pretty perfectly so you don't lock up the fronts on the entry it has a tendency to lock up on the entry uh, and in the mid corner it has a tendency to over rotate the rear so it's a very tricky corner this trying to really turn in now looking for the camber in the road Definitely gonna mount this curb on the inside. And as soon as I do, I'm gonna trail break all the way into it. As soon as I do, around 50% throttle, even less than that, 30%, 40, 50, very lazy, very slow. Try not to get the back end to kick out, and even a little bit of modulation here, you can see. So I went all the way up to 80 and reduced it back to around 70, then back to 100 again as I really open up the wheel. Still the back end kicked out just a tiny bit, but it wasn't a big deal at that point. Taking the car as much to the right as I can before I start to turn in here. I'm going to stay flat out. First couple of laps, if you're drafting, definitely lift. It's a mandatory lift. You'll just get chucked to the outside, scrub a lot of tires. So we're upshifting second into third. We're accelerating throughout this corner all the way up to into fourth gear. Staying on the inside. Using the curb to give you a little bit of rotation. I should have mentioned that. So the initial part of this curb, uh, if you touch it, it will give you a little bit of rotation, prevent the understeer from happening. But if you mount it too much, it's going to chuck you to the outside. So you've got to find that sweet spot. Then the car go to the outside, using this curb on the exit just a little bit. And I'm already braking diagonally or setting up the car diagonally into the outside and using this runoff. So you have uh, basically two markers here. This first uh, dark patch and this second. You want to break anywhere in between them. The safest part is here. This is probably going to end up uh, <laughs> not well. But, you know, some aliens can do that. I can't. I, I break just a little bit after, let's say, right around here. Peaking very high. Kind of surprised me to see how much I peaked here. Because you're trying to break late and you want to get plenty of rotation. All the way from 4th into 2nd, 
and as it merges as this runoff kind of blends into the star macro here that's my indication to start to turn in i'm going to start to turn in before that right around here and as i do i release the brakes all the way down into trail braking and i'm looking for this camber in the road that will suck me in this is your apex so there's a point right here where this is like the sweet spot where you want the car to be you can get the uh, left side of the car or at least the left front right on this blacker part of the curb to the left of the white line that will help you out a lot to get rotation done already back on the power at this point massive importance for the throttle here for stability the car has a tendency to kick out you don't want that and you don't want to be too greedy because you'll understeer on the exit too much and that will just be a bad day and lose so much time here you want to be early on the throttle so as soon as i reach the apex i'm already back at the 100 percent be a little more gentle get used to it you're probably gonna have to wait a little bit longer most of your laps i, I sure did before you go back to the full to full throttle here but you want to be as early as you can without understeering too much using the runoff here the the brown stuff whatever it is it's probably not a greatest idea it can be faster but i don't know five times out of ten you'll end up losing the car or you know getting too upset losing a lot of time on the exit and that's it pretty much from this point on i'm just gonna keep the car on the inside admittedly i kind of took it too much to the inside here and kind of bounced on the curb a little bit but it wasn't a big deal staying on the inside and for the fastest lap you want to hug this wall here instead of preparing the car for the outside that will give us a 123 507 at 50 celsius which i think is pretty decent it's about three seconds slower as i've said uh, from last season but for these track conditions i'm very happy with that hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please leave a like and subscribe to the channel let me know in the comments what you think hop over to my discord and i'll see you all in the next video bye bye